Welcome to EPG Patsala. I am Dr. Abu Saleh, an assistant professor of English at the Raja Pari Mohan College under University of Calcutta. Now we will be discussing a module on history and literature of uh, 17th century which has been written by Dr. Musarraf Hussain who is an assistant professor of English at Murarai Kavi Najrul College under University of Bardhaman, West Bengal. This module is part of the paper English Literature 1590 uh, to 1798. This is one of the foundation module of this paper and it has lot of information throughout the days in terms of history as well as literature written in between the time. Now let us move to the module. Some of the most precious and productive periods in the history of English literature fall within the timeline of 1590 to 1798. The tide of Renaissance after being generated in Italy in the late 14th century, reached the shore of England in late 15th century. It had its trickling impact upon life and literature of English people till early 17th century. During the middle and latter half of the 17th century, there had been further a rapid development of science and rebirth of classical ideals that resulted in the beginning of new rational inquiry, scientific and objective outlook in life as well as in literature. In between 1590 and 1798, a host of varying literatures and literary genres had emerged that gifted some of the ever remembered literary treasures not only to the reservoir of English literature but also that of all literature in general. Our discussion in this module would focus on two aspects of this time that is history as well as literature in between 1590 to 1798. Now first we move to the history of that during that period. England during that time was under the rule of three reigning houses commonly known as the house of Tudor when Queen Elizabeth reigned from 1558 to 1603. The next house was the House of Stuart and the kings were James Swan who ruled from 1603 to 1625, Charles Swan who ruled from 1625 to 1649. Next age was the Puritan age or it is known as Puritan Interingdom which was from 1649 to 1660. Further Charles II came and ruled from 1660 to 1685. James II from 1685 to 1688, then Mary II and William III came and ruled from 1689 to 1694, and after then William III from 1689 to 1702, and Queen Anne from 1702 to 1714. Further, the House of Hanover came in and their kings were George I from 1714 to 1727, George II from 1727 to 1760, George III from 1760 to 1820. Now let us discuss these houses and their kings and their activities in detail. So in between 1590 to 1798 we find the last days of Queen Elizabeth often called as Virgin Queen of Gloriana Elizabeth was the last monarch of Tudor dynasty she studied England during a period of political and religious turmoil and set her nation's course to become the leading Protestant world power for the centuries to come under the adroit rule of Queen Elizabeth during England experienced all-round development in socio-political economical sectors that perhaps provided the Renaissance mind with a congenial environment to explore physical as well as psychological territories never attempted so far. She died in 1603 and she was childless. After then, after discussing Queen Elizabeth, now we will discuss the rule and time of James I whose period was from 1603 to 1625. The first king of the house of Stuart was James VI of Scotland, son of Catholic Mary, Queen of Scot, who became James I of England. Important event during early days of the reign was the gunpowder plot of 1605. James I was against the spreading of Puritanism in England. 
He wanted a quiet and submissive parliament, but parliament with many of the Puritan members exhibited an independent temper and opposed the king in many issues. That led to the widening rift between the House of Stuart and the Puritans. So, we'll move forward and discuss the next king who is Charles I, whose rule was from 1625 to 1649. After the death of James I, Charles I sat on the English throne in 1625. During his reign, English socio-political life was completely divided into two sections. The first one was the Royalist, also called the Cavaliers, who supported the king and his policies. And the second one was called the Roundheads, so called because of typical haircuts, who were supporters of the Puritans and the Parliament. The snowballing tension between the king and the Parliament culminated to a bloody civil war that broke out in 1642. The Roundheads, led by Oliver Cromwell, came out victorious. Charles I was tried and found guilty and was eventually beheaded in January 1648. His son, Charles II, took refuge in France, accompanied by some of his royalists. The next period is known as Puritan Age or the Puritan Intergram, which is 1649 to 1660. England now came to be known as Commonwealth and began to be ruled by the Ram Parliament. And eventually, in 1653, Oliver Cromwell, with the aid of his soldier, demanded the Ram Parliament and government was then known to be protectorate with Oliver Cromwell as Lord Protector. During the Puritanical era, several acts were passed to ban the theatre houses and other kinds of entertainment like dueling horse racing, cockfighting, bear baiting, swearing, etc. During the reign of Cromwell's honored son Richard, English people grew completely disillusioned with his new government and earned to return to the older monarchical system. As a result, Charles II was called back to England and made the King of England in 1660. This is famously known as the restoration of monarchy. So we are discussing the political upheavals in English court and we find that after Charles and uh, after James I and Charles I, there was a Puritan time, and then Oliver Cromwell and his son, and again the restoration of monarchy happened. So now let us move to the reign of Charles II, whose ruling period was 1660 to 1685. With the coronation of Charles II, not only as Stuarts were restored, but also socially the nobles, the gentry, the bishops, the Anglican Church, etc., were also restored. Charles II reopened the theatre houses and all other means of recreation. Charles II and his followers, who had enjoyed a gay life in France during their exile, tended to introduce that type of foppery and looseness in England too. The strict moral codes that were introduced during the Puritan regime were revoked and that led to the atmosphere of gaiety, cheerfulness, and moral laxity and corruption in the court and to some extent in the society also. Another political development of the period was the formation of two political parties in England. The supporters of Charles I in the English Civil War developed into Tory party and the other party is known as the Whig party was formed in opposition to the court with the supporters of the parliament. There were two great calamities in the restoration period. One of them was the plague, Great Plague of London in 1665 that took about 68,000 human lives and the other was the devastating fire of London in 1666 that destroyed almost half of the London in just five days in between 2nd to 7th September. During the restoration age, there was a rapid development of science and resulted in the beginning of rational inquiry and significant and objective outlook. Now we'll discuss that life of life and reign of James II, which was from 1685 to 1688. Charles II died in 1685. His brother took the name of James II and succeeded him. A believer in staunch Catholicism and absolute monarchy, James II was not liked by somehow tolerated by the people of England. 
they were very keen to see his protestant daughter mary and to be his successor in the meantime he had a son and they thought that catholicism would never end so they wanted king james to go and invited mary and her husband william the orange to occupy the throne of england no sooner had william the orange landed on the shore of england and then james relinquished the throne and fled to france this was proverbially called the glorious revolution of 1688 because not a drop of blood was shed out in the monarchy now let us discuss mary and her rule during over england which was sometime from 1689 to 1694 mary too and william the orange ruled jointly from 1689 till mary's death in 1694 after which william the orange reigned single handedly till his death in 1702 in 1702 it's an important history in england when queen anne took over the reign after the death of william 3 anne the last ruler of stuart family and the younger sister of mary attended the throne and ruled england from 1702 to 1714 it was a prosperous period without much of the religious and political violence of that last century after queen anne the another house came in that is the hanover queen anne ended the long rule of stuarts and english throne started to be occupied by the house of hanover over almost two centuries george 1 ruled from 1714 to 1727 george 2 from 1727 to 1760 and george 3 from 1760 to 1820 The 18th century saw some important events in the duration. James Watt invented steam engine in 1784. By the time England began to experience agrarian as well as industrial revolution. Most importantly, the French Revolution began in Paris in 1789. All these defining factors had a palpable impact on English life and society as well as literature too. Now after discussing history of the time and several rules houses and rulers monarchs now we'll discuss the literature written in between the time and now let's see them now our discussion would underline the literary periods of 1590 to 1798 for the convenience of our discussion the literature of the time can primarily be categorized into two major section the renaissance period and the new classical period they are further subdivided into several periods ages as we will discuss now the renaissance period under the renaissance period we will find that from 1590 to 1603 it is the time of the culmination of elizabethan era which is also the known as the shakespearean age from 1603 to 1625 is known as the jacobian period or the jacobian age from 1625 to 1649 is known as the caroline age from 1649 to 1660 is known as the puritan age under the new classical period we find from 1660 to 1700 is known as the restoration period or it is also known as the age of dryden further from 1700 to 1745 it is known as the augustan age or age of pope and then 1700 to 1798 the age of sensibility the age of reason or even the age of johnson now let us discuss the culmination time of queen elizabeth which is somewhere in our period it is somewhere in between 1590 to 1603 it is known as the age of shakespeare due to the effect of renaissance humanism anthropocentric ideas flavored in english life and literature in the elizabethan age it was a golden age of literary creation poetry if we discuss genre wise we find poetry is one of the prevalent genre of that time the new born genre of english sonnet having been introduced by watt and all of surrey in the elizabethan england and been matured by philip sidney and poets like edwin edmund spencer culminated to peak of its glory in the masterly hands of william shakespeare shakespeare wrote altogether 154 sonnets 
in them shakespeare had departed from the conventional petrarchan theme and technique and of sonnet writing and celebrated masculine friendship sonnet number 1 to 126 in three chord trains and a concluding couplet with rhyme scheme abab cdcd efef and gg his long poems like the venus and adonis and lap of the lucrece were written in between 1592 to 1594 now if we look at drama then we will find dramatic literature reached its peak in the last days of elizabethan era major dramatist of the time were christopher marlowe william shakespeare ben johnson and so on According to Ruben Post Halleck Shakespeare's dramatic art underwent growth and evolution through four stages first one is sanguine period that was full of exuberance of youthful love and imagination belong to this group plays probably written before 1595 where the comedy of errors a midsummer's night dream romeo and juliet richard 2 and richard 3 now then the next period is the second period which is from 1595 to 1601 comparatively less exaggerative having deep insight into human nature the plays written during this period are as you like it the merchant of venice henry 4 henry 5 and so on the third phase we find which are sometime between 1601 to 1608 is full of fitful fever disappointment suffering produced great tragedies during that time like hamlet othello macbeth king lear etc and the fourth phase which is sometime between 1608 to 1613 already known uh, now this is age is known as the jacobian age gave birth to most tragedies and comedies like cymbeline the winter tales the tempest and so on with their variety of subject matter celebration of multifaceted life and some age conquering characters the mansion plays can easily be considered among the finest flowers of english literature now after discussing poetry and drama of elizabethan period especially of shakespearean period shakespearean age we'll move to the prose writing of this period if you look into the prose writing of this period we find the towering figure like sir francis bacon francis bacon is known as the father of english essays published the first edition of his essays in 1597 it's a typical renaissance writer bacon wrote aphoristic essays full of practical wisdom so after discussing part of elizabethan age we'll now move to the jacobian period which is sometime between 1603 to 1625 during the jacobian period literature was given a lot of importance and it was as its glorious point james one was a good champion of literature and under his patronization the first authorized version of bible was published in 1611 If we see in the part of drama we find at it was the time of Shakespeare most and greatest tragedies and tragic comedies and romances were written however jacobian drama especially tragedy suffered a decadence in the post shakespearean time major dramatists writing in that time were sir francis beaumont john fletcher george chapman and so on however Ben Jonson who had already started writing new kind of realistic comedies called comedy of humors in the closing elizabethan years produced some matured plays Jonson based his comedy on the medieval psychological theory of four humors according to the theory our body is made up with four principal humors blood flame choler or yellow bile and black bile or the melancholy and any imbalance in the proportion of these three humors in the body can would keep to a rise of humorous character most of the comedies written by johnson are every man in his humor every man out of his humor bhalpane or the fox which was published in 1606 epicone or the silent woman which was published in 1609 and the alchemist was published in 1611 another popular style of drama was the revenge tragedy popularized by john webster and thomas kidd so after discussing the dramatic 
parts, we now move to poetry of this period. In the realm of poetry, this age saw a radical break from the Petrarchan tradition, a sea change in terms of the novelty in the ways of expression and forms. The poets of the innovative lyrics were much later branded as metaphysical poets. The flag bearer among them was, of course, John Donne, who has composed some wonderful lyrics. Other poets of the group was George Herbert, Andrew Marvel, Richard Crasso, Henry Vaughan, and etc. They wrote on Christian mysticism and exorcism. Their poetry was marked by extensive use of metaphysical concepts, scholastic allusions, paradoxes, wit, oxymoron, and so on. Now, let us discuss about prose writing in this period. This was the period when prose writing of Bacon, John Donne's prose sermons, and Robert Barton's famous Anatomy of Melancholy was published. Now, we will move to the Caroline period, which is sometime in between 1625 and 1649. The age derives its names from the term Carolas, which is the Latin name of Charles, the ruler of that time. In drama, we find a consequences of civil war. Theatres were closed in September 1642 and that marked a natural death for drama and on showed such a height of achievement. Poetry We find the metaphysical poets continued to compose poems in this age. Moreover, another group of lyric poets, better known as cavalier poets, were writing elegant, witty, polished lyrics of love and gallantry. They were hardcore supporters of Charles I. The group, also known as Sons of Bain or Tribe of Bain, due to their admiration for and the following of Ben Johnson, included Richard Lovelace, John Suckling, Thomas Carew, Robert Herrick, and others. In the meantime, the great poet John Milton appeared in the scene on the English literature and began composing poems. His nativity ode, El Allegro, Il Pansereso, Camus and the great elegy Lysidas was published in 1629, 1633, 1634 and 1637 respectively. Prose writing in this period were Milton's greatest prose work Areopagitica or the liberty of unlicensed printing was published in 1744. Beside this age produced religious prose writing. In prose writing, we find that Milton's Areopagitica was published in 1644. Beside, there are writings like Religio Medici, which was published in 1643 by Sir Thomas Bowney. Now, we'll move to the Commonwealth period, which is sometime in between 1649 to 1660. Drama. Drama almost disappeared for 18 years after the Puritans closed the public theatres from 1642. In poetry, we find important poets like Henry Vaughan, Edmund Waller, Abraham Cowley, Sir William Devenant, and Andrew Marvel. And the greatest poetical product of this age was Milton, Paradise Lost, which was published in 1667, Paradise Regained, which was published in 1671, and also a poetic play named Samson Agonistes, which was published in 1671. In prose writing, we find uh, the pamphlets of John Milton. Hobbes wrote his famous political treatise, The Leviathan, which was published in 1651. Other notable prose writers of the time were Thomas Brownie, Thomas Fuller, Jeremy Toller, Richard Baxter, Isaac Walton, and so on. Now, after discussing Commonwealth period, we will move to the Restoration period, which is sometime in between 1600 to 1700. Restoration age made marks of the beginning of neoclassicism in literature and a complete break from the Renaissance period. The literature of the Restoration period is completely a mirror to the society, reflecting the very spirit of the age. The literature became realistic concerning with life manners of town people. There was a kind of tendency among the writers to imitate the classical writers in theme as well as forms and the manner of expression. John Dryden is representative literature of that age, that is Hoy Restoration Age, also sometimes called as the Age of Dryden. 
In the drama, we find after a long ga gap, dramatic literature got a new lease of life following opening of the theatre houses in England. There are two finest gifts of restoration period in English drama. One is the restoration heroic tragedy and other one the restoration comedy of manners. Most important writers of heroic plays were John Dryden and uh, others like Thomas Atway, Nathaniel Lee, John Crowney, Thomas Southern, etc. And there are important plays like John Dryden's Tyrannic Love, The Conquest for Granada, Wolf for Love, Indian Queen, The Rival Queens of Nathalian Lee, Venice Prejud of Thomas Otway were important plays of the time. Now we move to Restoration Comedy of Manners. And we find there are important writers like William Congreve, William Eth George Etheridge, William Wesserly, George Farquhar. Uh, Van Bra were writing in this kind of plays. Their plays are like Love for Love, The Double Dealer, The Old Bachelor and so on. In poetry we find the restoration poetry laid the foundation for classical school of poetry in England which culminated later in the 18th century. The poetry of this age was characterized by the emphasis on forms and realism, by intellect and wit, sometimes they are tended to be satiric in spirit, they were written predominantly in heroic couplet. The major name of this period is obviously John Dryden again, his Absalom and Achitophel, the Medal, Macflecno, and the Hin and the Panther are important writings of that time. Apart from Dryden, there are unforgettable verse of Samuel Butler, who wrote Hudibras, which was published in 1684, attacking the Puritans. In prose writings, we find Dryden left a remarkable mark in the form of essay on dramatic poesy, a discourse concerning the original and progress of satire, perfect and preface to the fables, etc. John Locke wrote an essay concerning human understanding, treatise on government and thoughts on education. Writers like John Bunyan wrote The Pilgrim's Progress and, Moran, and also Oronoko by Afra Bain is an important writing of this period. Also further, the writing diaries and memories like John Elvin and Samuel Pepe's were also important aspects in this age. Now we move to the Augustan age, which was sometime in between 1700 to 1745. The term Augustan was applied as a catchword to draw an analogy between English literature of the first half of the 18th century and the brilliant Latin literary period of Virgil, Horace and Ovid under the Roman Emperor Augustus. The classical poet and critics were believed to be best models to ultimate standards of literary taste in this age. The literature of this period showed some common features like more emphasis in the form than spirit, predominance of logic and reason, spontaneity and simplicity, sacrifice for elegance and correctness. Literature was confined to the town life, to the coffee houses and drawing rooms. Nature uh, meant to the human nature of good sense and mannerism, commonly satirical and didactic dwelling upon the subjects related to social, political and even personal. Language and diction of the poetry was stereotype, artificial and mannered. Heroic couplet was a predominant verse pattern of this age. The Augustan age was remar remarkable for its variety of literary outputs. In poetry, we find the poems of Alexander Pope and also his translations of Homer, Iliad and Odyssey. His poems like Rape of the Lock, which was published in 1712, The Danciad in 1728 are important one of this period. In drama, we find sentimental growth of sentimental comedy and we find important names like Holly Sieber, uh, Richard Steely, uh, etc. Prose, in prose we find it is high, rightly been said that 18th century is the age of prose and reason. Tremendous development of prose literature was disseminable in the hands of Jonathan Swift, Joseph Addison, Richard Steely and Daniel Defoe. Swift wrote on politics, religion, books, human follies and fables, etc. 
His famous satires were Gulliver Travels, The Battle of Books, A Tale of Tub, etc. Daniel Defoe had no less contribution to the development of Augustan prose. His most important gift to fiction writing was his semi-fictional work Robinson Crusoe. His other works are Mall Flanders, which was published in 1722, Colonial Jack, which was published in 1722, the and the Unfortunate Mistress or the Roxana, which was published in 1724. We also find the periodical essays of Richard Steele, Joseph Addison and Samuel Johnson in this period. Uh, some of the important periodicals are The Tatler, The Spectator and so on. In the part of novel, we find 18th century marks the childhood and pre-youth of English novel. Various factors contributed to the emergence of novels and some of them are the rise of middle class as the aftermath of enormous growth of commerce and industry. With the dissemination of democratic ideals, the importance of common men came to be recognized. The desire for freedom from the cycle of classicism, the decline and drama and the realism in novel increase in the number of readers, especially the women readers. And in the first page, we find there are important writers like Samuel Richardson, Henry Fielding, and so on, who were writing important novels like Joseph Andrews, Tom Jones, and many of them were picaresque in nature. Now, the next phase is the age of sensibility, which is sometime from in between 617, 14 to 1789 or also say called can be called till 1798. The age started with the following year of Pope's death and extended up to 1789, the following year of Dr. Johnson's death. Alternative dates frequently proposed for this period are 1789 and 1798. Literature of this age was influenced by some factors like industrial and agrarian revolution, expansion of city and depopulation of countryside, poor condition of workers, new class conflicts, pollution of the environment, and resulted reaction against urbanism and industrialization, and new emphasis on the beauty and values of nature. As a reaction to the rationalism of the Augustan age, the literature of this period shows some extent leaning towards sentimentalism both in poetry and pose. As age of sensibility is sometimes described as age of Johnson because of his towering figure and his followers. In poetry, we find Johnson wrote in, in the early days his writing career with two satiric poems modeled on Roman poet Juvenal's The Vanity of Human Wishes which was published in 1749 and London. Two important poetical movements were felt in this age were the pre-romantic poetry which is the precursor of the romantic poetry and then the next one is graveyard poetry. Important poems like Thomas Gray's Elegy written in Country Churchyard is written in this period. In prose we find Dr. Johnson's contribution to English prose is very long lasting. His dictionary of the English language got published in 1755. Other prose works include an annotated version of William Shakespeare plays, Rasselas, Live of Most Eminent English Poets, and etc. James Boswell wrote the biography The Life of Samuel Johnson. In novel, we find that in novel writing, we see some sort of maturity in the proliferation of generic types in the mid and latter part of 18th century. We find the sentimental novels, the tradition of writing sentimental novel that had already started with Richardson and Fielding, went forward with Oliver Goldsmith, Vicar of Wakefield, Lawrence Towns, Trinstam Sandy, and Sentimental Journey. Also, we find that there are novels of manners. Another important development of this period is the Gothic novel. Some of the novelists of this age combined in their writing elements of horror, mystery, and romance. They recreated gloomy, grotesque, and medieval atmosphere in their works. Their vogue was introduced in English by Horace Walpole's masterpiece The Castle of Orlando and other writings of this time. In drama, we find Oliver Goldsmith and Sheridan was continuing with the stage. And we find important writings like The Rivals, which was published in 1775, The School for Scandal, The Critique by Sheridan, 
and goldsmith the good natured man and she stoops to conquer so in this module we find a lot of information and detailing especially we started with the uh, history of this period uh, we started with the various houses and their rules and the, the time socio-political context uh, how the age developed how the time period was growing and the situation in England further we divided the age wise and we found uh, we found that various way kinds of writing especially prose writings and novels were coming in this age so hope you find this module useful and if you want to know more about this in detail please have a look at the e-text of this module you can also have a look at our further reading section where we have listed several books and articles on this period and literature of this time also you can participate in the self-assessment section of this module thank you so much